new setup, same me. <laughs> doi, doi, doi. Welcome to Chiller Thriller, also known as Horror for Scared People. My name is Riley and I am here to bridge the gap for those of you who maybe have an interest in horror movies but are a little too scared to tackle one on your own. I got you. Today we are going to be talking about the movie of my quarantine experience, Unfriended. My sincerest apologies to all my friends who have to deal with me screaming hands up every time we have a Zoom happy hour. All right, all right, let's stop fucking around. Everyone, hands up right now. I unabashedly, unironically love this movie. It is just so incredibly immersive and creative in a way I had never seen before. If you didn't know, the entire film is shot to make it look like it's all taking place on a laptop screen, and I find this effect extremely effective. It was shot all in one take, like multiple times a day, and I can only imagine how demanding that must have been. Unfriended walked so 1917 could run. I also think that the performances are really genuinely impressive. If you couldn't tell, I'm about to get really defensive about this movie that seemingly no one else in the world likes, so buckle up. But before we get too deep into all of that, you know we have to address the jump scares. I personally find jump scares incredibly heinous, and this movie has some of the worst kind, so take special note as we roll those timestamps here. Now, if jump scares are the only thing keeping you from watching this movie, thank you for being here and I really, really hope you enjoy Unfriended. Just give it a chance, for me. However, if there is any specific triggering or otherwise upsetting content that you're worried about coming across in this movie, stick around because we are going to dive into all of that in just a minute. Before I roll those timestamps, however, I want to put out sort of a blanket general warning that the events of this movie center around a death by suicide, so if discussions or images of suicide are something that are especially difficult for you, be extra careful when you go into this one. Welcome to Spoiler Town! Now I don't think I have ever said this about any movie, but you have to watch this movie on a laptop. Especially if you are a Mac user, all of the notifications that our main character gets really make you feel like it's happening to you. So the movie opens with our main character Blair reading an article on her laptop about another teenage girl, Laura Barnes, who had killed herself just a year ago to this day. The article goes on to say that Laura killed herself after a video of her incredibly intoxicated at a party got spread around her school. We get to see a bit of this video, but before too much is revealed, Blair is interrupted by a Skype call from her boyfriend Mitch. I couldn't find the answer to this anywhere online, but I really wonder if this was seen as like great promotion for Skype or if they were really pissed about it because no one wants a demon or a ghost hacking their Skype call. Now the first sign for me that Blair may not be entirely trustworthy as a protagonist is the fact that she starts playing music after she picks up a Skype call. Major red flag for me. However, she is very respectful of the rules of lockdown, so she gets a couple more bonus points from me. You know what, you should just let me come over and show you how it's done. No, you can't. In classic movie high school boy fashion, Mitch can think of nothing else but how desperately he wants to have sex with his girlfriend. No, no that's that. not it. I don't want to live there. I want to live higher. Now, as cringy as this conversation is, to me, it also just makes them feel like really real characters, and it is almost charming at times. That is, until Mitch pulls out a knife, then I have to ask these two to pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> hey, that worked. That, was, that does it for you. But Blair seems to be into it, so who am I to judge? She is so into it, in fact, that she tells Mitch that she wants to lose her virginity to him on prom night. What? I want to make prom night the night. How quaint. Mitch is stoked beyond belief at the prospect of having sex. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate your boobies? Ah. Yeah, 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 your boobies. But his celebration is cut short when the rest of their friend group joins in on the Skype call. 
Arguably the scariest part of this movie is when Blair's friends all join the Skype call as she is undressing. It also includes one of the movie's most relatable moments in which Blair and Mitch's friend Ken says a joke that doesn't really land, so he decides to say the exact same thing again, only louder. Oh, someone's in their chonies! Uh oh, a little cyber stash. Someone's in their chonies! Blair, you're in addition to Ken, we also have Jess, the resident party girl, and Adam, whose only personality trait seems to be rich. Mitch insists that he didn't accept the call allowing their other friends into the chat, and we saw that Blair didn't do it either, leaving us to wonder who did? Now I gotta say, minus the whole ghost in the chat thing, this is really what I've been doing with most of my nights lately. Speaking of a ghost in the chat, the group encounters what Zoom would call a non-video participant named Billy, and no one can figure out who it is. And no matter how many times they disconnect and reconnect the call, they just can't get rid of this faceless person in the group call. As a person whose day job includes a lot of technical support for virtual meetings, this scene really made my anxious work brain itch. In a private chat with Blair, Mitch says he got a weird Facebook message from the one and only Laura Barnes. And yes, that is the same Laura Barnes we saw kill herself at the beginning of this movie. Just then, Blair also gets a message from Laura Barnes, and the two of them decide that her account must have been hacked, but Blair runs into some trouble when she tries to memorialize the account. This moment still gives me chills when I watch it, and if you came here to tell me that this movie isn't scary, leave me alone! I feel like it's worth mentioning here that all of the Facebook and Skype accounts used in this movie were real and active at the time of release. It really reminds me of the Blair Witch Project's viral marketing, and I just think it's a really fun thing they did. Blair also discovers that the Laura Barnes account can't be unfriended, and she quickly turns on Mitch, treating him like he's IT or something. Now I really feel like I'm at work. The messages from Laura Barnes get increasingly aggressive, and Blair gets the idea that it might be their friend Val pretending to be Laura to mess with them. So she adds Val into the group call, where everyone is immediately so mean to her. Poor Val. Turn up the sound, you dumb bitch. Val! Can you hear me now, Ken? Yeah, there you are, you floozy. But good use of the word floozy. Seemingly out of nowhere, pictures of Val in very compromising positions are posted on Jess's Facebook account. Val is understandably confused and upset, but Jess vehemently denies posting the pictures and pretty quickly deletes them. Yeah, I didn't fucking that. do it, okay? So you can you can be nice to me you and I can help you. Up. Or you can suck my fucking dick. However, almost immediately the same pictures are posted on Adam's Facebook account. The Skype chat then gets really heated with accusations flying everywhere, but everyone denies typing anything into the chat. What is happening right what now? The fuck? I have to say, there is something I really love about a ghost that just wants to create a lot of drama. Billy, the very same dramatic ghost, reveals that they are the one who had been typing the messages, leaving everyone stunned. Well, who the fuck is Billy? Blair discovers that the Billy account is attached to Laura Barnes' Skype account, and after asking the age-old question, What is a troll? The group utilizes the tried-and-true hands-up method to figure out who is typing, but when the messages still come through, we know it's official ghost business time. After receiving a private message from Laura slash Billy, I'm gonna be using those names interchangeably, just understand they're referencing the same person, Val decides she's going to call 911, and I have to say, I'm really not following her logic of telling the police that someone has hacked a dead girl's Skype account. She tells the 911 operator that direct threats are being made against her, but in the same breath says, Ken, I swear to God, if I find out this is you, I will burn you alive. Which I feel like can't be too helpful to her case. Even though Laura has instructed them not to hang up, Val exits the chat. Thanks for stopping by, Val. Real nice, nice lady. Yeah. Real nice chick. The group then gets sent a screenshot that the Billy account has posted to Instagram, showing Val telling Laura to kill herself after she asked her to take down the embarrassing video of her. According to Ken, however, Val's comments aren't completely unwarranted. Laura fucking sucked. She was a big bully, okay, and she deserved all the shit she got from that video. Which is an interesting take. This Billy account must be doing incredible numbers on Instagram because the comments are absolutely flooding in, calling Val a monster and a murderer. At the same time, Laura's Facebook account messages Blair telling her that if she hangs up, all of her friends will die. And just in case we didn't think Laura was being serious, Val rejoins the call. 
She is motionless, leaving the group to believe that her video is frozen until we see her cell phone vibrating and moving across the table. Look, look at it, it's right there. She's not- Look at that, that's spooky. I feel like I'm just desperately pointing out all the things I think are scary and cool in this movie just to get someone on my side. This movie's good. It's a super effective trick that leads into a pretty intense and disturbing scene culminating in Val's death. We don't see exactly what happens, but we see a bottle of bleach on the table, we hear Val's body fall to the ground, and when the police arrive, because yes, the police actually came after that 911 call, we learn that they are calling it a suicide. And that's a wrap on Val for this movie. Poor floozy. In the Skype chat, Laura announces that she will be exposing everybody's dirty little secrets. Starting with Blair, she sends her a document hilariously titled notboyfriend.jpg. It is a picture of Adam and Blair appearing to be post-coital, and in case we had forgotten, it is helpfully labeled to remind us that Adam is not Blair's boyfriend. In case we're still unclear what's going on, Laura sends Blair a second attachment titled He Touch. Ken sends everybody some nondescript software that's supposed to clean any malware off their computers and hopefully get rid of any hacker that might have infiltrated their Skype call. And I haven't heard this many people talking over each other since I had a virtual happy hour with my extended family last week. You wanna play the game? You wanna play the game? Jess, you wanna play the game? Also, Adam has whipped out a gun for some fucking reason. I don't really know what he's intending to do with that shoot his computer screen. Thank you, Ken. Adam, you pulled out a fucking gun! Adam then takes this opportunity to call the police and check on Val. Yeah, remember her? And while this is going on, Blair takes a stroll down Facebook memory lane to reveal to the audience what good friends she and Laura were while she was alive. As Adam is talking to the phone operator, we realize that it isn't a police officer at all. I said, don't hang up. Billy is back in the Skype chat, enabling their camera to show an unidentifiable room. In a really fun and scary twist on the call is coming from inside the house trope, when Ken stands up, we realize that the camera is in his room. Now brace yourself for excessive jump scare and gore city as Ken gets brutally murdered by his blender. Blair declares that now, so This isn't funny up. anymore! Because it was so hilarious before. Laura takes over Blair's computer screen and reveals to the audience some more of the video that is credited as leading to her suicide. We see Laura and Val get in a fight and cut to Laura completely passed out with her pants covered in poop. I couldn't think of a more delicate way to phrase that, I apologize. Laura is wanting to keep this party going and she begins a game of Never Have I Ever, which evidently is a game Blair has never heard of in her life. What? Wait, how do you play? How do you play? I'm a bit insulted that the filmmakers thought they had to explain the rules of Never Have I Ever to us. In this version of the game, however, the person who loses dies. So I guess that part was worth explaining. This is the dumbest fucking thing. This next scene is pure chaos. Doesn't matter! Oh, fucking hero, hey, man. knock it off! They get into some knockdown, drag out verbal fights as secrets get revealed throughout this game like Jess spreading a rumor that Blair has an eating disorder, or Mitch making out with Laura Barnes. Granted, these are things worth getting upset about, but this group really has to work on managing their emotions when the ghost of a dead classmate is trying to murder them over Skype. Fuck you! Great friend, Blair. Adam goes off the deep end when he finds out that Mitch sold him out to the police for selling weed because- I almost had a record! What a piece of shit. Adam is so incensed that he comes up with his own never have I ever question, which is incredibly counterproductive, not to mention a total dick move. Never have I ever Blair. fucked what are you doing? my boyfriend's best what are you, what are you friend. What are you doing, Adam? Blair. This forces Blair to reveal to Mitch that she cheated on him with Adam, but the bright side is we get this really excellent music cue over Mitch's reaction. It doesn't it fucking does matter. matter. It does matter. It does matter because we I can really relate to Mitch in this scene because I also get just this intense when I'm playing drinking games with my friends. Everyone's hands up! We're still playing! We're still playing here! Laura then begins playing a video of Blair and Adam having sex. Now, I'm not sure why exactly this video exists, if we're supposed to think that the ghost of Laura took this video, but 
Based on the absolutely horrible things we learn about Adam doing from this game of Never Have I Ever, I wouldn't be surprised if he put the camera there himself without telling Blair. Everyone has completely lost their marbles, and Adam starts waving around his loaded gun again until he gets distracted by a fax coming in from his printer. Blair receives one too, and both she and Adam refuse to show the others what the pieces of paper say. Unable to deal with the two of them sharing another secret, Mitch tells Blair that if she doesn't show him what's on the paper, he will leave the call, meaning that Laura Barnes will come and kill him. Blair quickly turns the paper around, revealing the message, and the gun in Adam's hand turns on him and he is shot directly in the face. No! 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 As everyone tries to regroup from that, we get an ad for free live cams, featuring a very familiar looking shot of a young woman undressing. The next Never Have I Ever is directed at Jess, who's just been kind of crying in the corner of this Skype call this whole time, but Blair convinces her not to play along, which seems like terrible advice to me. Obviously, when Jess doesn't answer, all the lights are shut off in her house signaling that Laura Barnes is coming to kill her. I'm not sure what Blair was expecting, but in a panic, she turns to chat roulette to try and find someone to call the police and send them to Jess's house. Now this seems like it would never work in a million years, but also maybe it's a totally genius idea. I haven't decided yet. Regardless, Blair finds a lot of the people you'd expect to come across on chat roulette. Oh God. Until she lands on this person who is unbelievably trusting and calm and actually does call the police for them. Me she's and my boyfriend, boyfriend and she's my boyfriend. Alas, it seems like this was too little too late as we are about to see another really gruesome death scene. Jess's camera cuts in and out until we see her with a hot curling iron jammed all the way down her throat. Very reverse sleepaway camp, no? Honestly, I'm not sure if I'll be able to put a clip of this in the video because it is incredibly graphic, but use your imagination and you'll get the idea. Now we are left with only Blair and Mitch, and this scene that they share together is actually really sweet. It's an alarm. I said for tomorrow we have a test. Until we are reminded that they're cyber bullies. In this final act, Laura wants them to admit which one of them posted the video of her. Blair is incredibly adamant that they had nothing to do with it. Please, Laura, it wasn't us! But in a private chat with Laura, she tells her that Mitch is the one who posted it. Very quickly, Mitch is stabbed right through the eye, which is something you never want to see. At this point, I have to digress and wonder what that next day at school is like. A good bit of the stuff that went down here is played out on Facebook and Instagram for everyone to see. So can you imagine seeing all that shit online and then finding out that this entire friend group is dead? What a whirlwind. Laura thanks Blair for her bravery, but she has one last bone to pick with her. Laura tags Blair in a video on Facebook, and we finally get to see the entirety of this video that set everything off. This shows that Blair is the one who took the video in the first place, and once again, everyone at their school immediately sees this video and absolutely destroys Blair in the comments. Laura says that she can never forgive her for what she's done before two hands come down and close Blair's laptop screen, shattering the illusion of this film's structure before Laura lunges directly at the camera and the credits roll. <coughs> I had to watch this jump scare so many times in the process of making this video and I still can't watch it without looking between my fingers. I hate it so much and that's unfriended. Is this movie flawed? Absolutely, but I really respect the way that they had an idea that must have been so technically difficult to execute, but they went with it anyway. I can't even imagine the strain it must have caused to shoot that entire movie multiple times a day. It is a marathon. Now that's not to say that the quality of a movie should be decided based on how hard it was to make that movie, but I do think this movie deserves a lot more credit than it gets. But that is enough of my defense of Unfriended. Keep an eye out for those Zoom hackers everybody's talking about, especially if you're a known cyberbully. And until next time, remember, there's nothing to be scared of. Laura is wanting to keep this... Why do I talk like a dumbass? Freaking nailed it, man. <laughs>